They're combing the streets. Searching house to house. If they arrest you two, they will take you to their headquarters, and you will not return. I'm more concerned with a six-foot cat man who's got claws that can cut through vibranium alloy. By my count, that makes two super soldiers loose in Paris. Three. Counting you. And that's two too many. Be there before the sun rises, before the Germans, before that American. The eye of force has been found. Please, just stick to the rooftops. Be careful, stand with me. When am I not? It's better if I tackle this one alone. You may. Encounter some obstacles. That won't be a problem. Our cat friend is definitely here, too. And by the look of things, he's not very far ahead. The American boy is right on your heels. Who the hell are you? If you wanted us dead, we'd be dead. So what do you want? Answers. That's far enough! Stay out of my way! Stay Aside. I do not take orders from anyone! I don't have time for this. Neither do I. Let's switch the feed and go back to that bridge environment. And let's see, yep, you're live, good, okay. So Colin, let's boom down and take a closer look at this environment. So to create a really immersive game experience, the characters and environments have to work together harmoniously. We can't just drop believable characters into a less than convincing world. So we need to start with authentic and densely detailed environments as the setting to our story and look, because part of our story is set in 1940s occupied Paris, we needed the word world to have a really believable and visceral level of detail and grit, as you can see here. So Roman, why don't we focus on the ground here for a bit? Now look at that. That's an amazing amount of detail. It would have been nearly impossible to get something this complex to run in real time without the new features in 5.4. So Kim, let's talk about some of the levels of detail that we're seeing here. Sure. So, we're talking about Nanite's new adaptive tessellation feature. So, whilst Nanite lets you create environments like you're seeing here of incredible detail, the memory requirements can become impractical to realize for such a level of complexity across a huge level without the need for lots of instancing. And we thought that was a challenge and we wanted to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, Colin, let's actually strip this scene right down to the dirt so folks can see what we're talking about. So, See how simple, this is relatively simple ground plane. Actually, let's, um, let's show the triangles so you can actually see what's there. Just a few hundred triangles. Let's pop it back to the beauty render view. Um, but with this new dynamic tessellation capability, we can actually displace that simple geometry and create new three-dimensional geometry of the quality that you're used to with Nanite. With nothing more than layering tile textures and using shader logic, you can make incredibly complex effects. So instead of me trying to explain it, let's get Colin to show the magic, and uh, let's see a transformation of this face. This technique allows you to see an unprecedented level of geometric detail, but it's also memory efficient and can be changed dynamically in the runtime of your game. So things like footprints or tire tracks or even supernatural effects, <laughs> if you such want, some would want them, can be visualized. And just to show how this ge simple geometry has now been transformed, let's have a look at the triangle view again. There you go. What you expect from Nanite. So it's a really, really smart, interesting technique to actually get details in the, into the games without crazy, crazy amounts of geometry. 
I'm going to switch it back to the uh, detail view. Thank you. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, this technology isn't just useful for the ground and for the ground terrain. It applies to every detail in the environment. So let's fly over to that pile of objects on the left over there, for example. And Colin, while we do, can you kill those headlights for me? Cool. Thank, thank you. OK, so imagine our challenge. We're trying to authentically recreate a harsh winter in occupied Paris. That means every prop, every object, every detail, every rooftop needs to be realistically blanketed in snow. So now let's show how we can dial up the snow accumulation on these objects. Right? And of course, we can dial it back as desired. It's making me feel chilly, actually. Yeah, actually, it's a little cold up here. Well, maybe it's just um, uh, <laughs> And remember, of course, like Kim said, thanks to this technology, this is all actual geometry. So you can see how tools like these would really empower even a small team to art direct and set dress their environments dynamically. It enables our artists to create a series of layers in the environment and then build up the complexity layer by layer by layer. Now, speaking of set dressing, let's go check out that fire barrel over by the watchtower we saw earlier. Yeah, that's the one there. And let's turn on a light to really illuminate the smoke coming out of the barrel. Thank you. Look at that. That's amazing. We could have never achieved effects this realistic in the past. So this is what we call a heterogeneous volumes. In the past, effects like these would be done with particle sprites. But that's kind of a cheat that often breaks down and can look flat. It's nice from afar, but far from nice, as we say <laughs> back in the UK. Um, so if we look at the glow of the fire on, as it dynamically illuminates the volumetric smoke, you can see that, that light transmitting through the volume. You can also see that the smoke itself is casting shadows onto the world, but also itself. These volumetrics can also mix with more traditional effects as well. So if you do want to put particles in there, fog, or even cards, you can do it. It all works in a, in a unified way. You can run the simulation, the, the smoke simulation, in Unreal Engine natively if you want. Or you can import open VDB data sets as sparse volume textures, resulting in film quality visual effects, volumetric visual effects, all running in real time that total, are totally responsible to responsive to dynamic lighting. Yeah, and it, it, it just looks incredible. Now, uh, of course, all of this is just to help us tell our story, right? And the story is nothing without great characters. So let's head back over to the bridge and catch up with Cap. Now, an essential part of any character's persona, particularly a Marvel hero, is their look. And it can be really distracting if the outfit doesn't look as realistic and believable as the rest of the world. As you can see, Cap's leather uniform fits just like you would expect in real life, with all the correct material properties and the complexity of creases forming as he moves. From a technical perspective, this is where we can effectively utilize machine learning. We can set up and run complex simulations in a package like Houdini, and import that data into UE. We then use this to train an ML model producing film quality deformations that run in real time. But none of this matters without great facial performances. So let's bring Azuri, T'Challa's grandfather, and our Black Panther into this scene, this time with his mask off. But I know who you are, Captain America's hero dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. Right, and as he pauses here, Roman, why don't you go in really close and really show everybody the detail that we have in these models. Um, it's, it's insane, right? It's like, amazing. Uh, it's essential for us to retain every nuance of the outstanding performance that our actor, Kari Payton, brought to Azuri's character. What you just saw there were untouched MetaHuman animator solves. Mm -hmm. So working with the MetaHuman process, we've been able to honor our amazing actors' performances and faithfully transform them into equally powerful digital performances. Now, of course, it all starts with the actor's talent, and we're fortunate to have two of our cast with us in the audience today. So I'd like to introduce Drew Morline, who plays Captain America. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and, uh, and Kari Payton, our Black Panther. See, they hug, they're friends. They're not really fighting. It's, it's all good. Um, and of course, I want to take this opportunity to thank them and the rest of our wonderful cast for going on this incredibly crazy journey with us. 
Uh, and now, as a special treat, uh, let's take a look at the entire bridge scene that you saw earlier. But this time, we'll keep Azuri's mask off to really showcase what we can do when all this incredible talent and all these amazing features come together. But remember, this is running entirely in real time. Awesome. That's far enough! I'm here on the business of the United States government. Yours is not the only business here. Stay out of my way. Stand aside. I do not take orders from anyone. Turn around, boy. Go home. Look, pal, I don't know who you are. But I know who you are. Captain, America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. Says the man dressed like an overgrown house cat. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. I don't have time for this. Neither do I. <laughs> 